Hi everyone, so in this video I'm sharing my tips to get a lovely piped collar and try and help you achieve that super neat point where your two collar sections meet. So on the right side of my facing I've marked the seam allowance up to pretty much where um, the piping is going to end and I do this with my Clover water-soluble pencil. I absolutely love these. Can't rate them highly enough. They wash out so easily either with just a bit of water from your iron or after when they've been in the wash. And then on the back I've marked the centre front and the end. This is the point where the collars meet. So this is the end of your piping. Um, two crucial points. So as you can see, your bias binding has a stitch line from where they assembled it. Um, that's very handy because that can help with the positioning. And you're going to just quickly pin in place, following, matching up the blue. And then what you do to get around the corners, you can see I snipped in ever so slightly, but not going through that stitching line to help you get around the corner. Then you're going to pin all this in place and um, machine base that on your machine. So you do that using your zipper foot so obviously the ridge will run alongside the cord you've got to try and get as nice and close don't worry about getting too close because really this is just the first step to hold it in place and then you will go back on your machine and secure it so i start stitching just past that point we marked um with a basting stitch and i leave this top edge free so that it can I can move this wherever I need to to get the best fit when the collar is fully in place um, and you can see it's nicely quite close to the cord not like perfect but close enough for the next step okay so this is the most difficult bit to show but essentially we've made a facing and shirt sandwich you remember I left the little tail end free this is my pyjama shirt with the collar already in place and so you can see this is the seam allowance stitching line so that's going to be actually really helpful for to use um, in this next step and what you're going to do is you're going to use that to figure out if your bias binding is going to line up nicely so sort of use that stitching line and the stitching line on your bias to work out where that needs to be hold that in the right place but twist the end so it gets out of the way of the seam allowance because you don't want that peaking more than it should do. So what you've got is this little bit, <laughs> it's only a small amount I know, where it is going in the right direction and then you veer it off and that will help when you stitch across the seam allowance up here, it will then make a neat point. So I opened up my collar from the other side, the one I'd already done, so I could show you a bit better. Now on the inside here you can see the ever so slightly offset. This is the collar. This was my facing with this little loose end and you can see it's on track and then it suddenly veers off out of the seam allowance little guy little nubbin so um yeah it's following that that seam allowance line is crucial i mean you can mark it all the way from your collar to your facing area if that helps you um you can see there's a lot of layers there obviously i've got the stitching line for the bias and then the stitching line for installing it and then i think i unpicked it once to make sure it was utterly perfect but yeah you can see on the right side it disappears just where the seam of the actual fabric meets not where the bias binding is so that's another tip to sort of look out for when you're positioning your other side so yeah you're going to really want to focus on where this seam allowance point would hit here and make sure that lines up right along that point perfectly before you sew 
another trick in case you don't trust yourself is to um, get the binding just like we said line it all up but before you stitch put a pin along the um, stitching position so that you can double check that it's definitely going to meet right at that corner and you can see I didn't pin the closest because that's my, where my stitching line is actually going to be but that looks pretty good to me so then you could hand base that to be certain <laughs> and then stitch over it so you can see obviously I haven't finished it I just did it nice and quick for you guys but you can see I've got two corners now that neatly finish just where I want them to and um, I guess other tips I can give you is you want to make sure you trim and grade this down really nicely to get a smooth curve you can move your needle ever so slightly over to get as close to the bias binding as you want um, I usually go over by like one or two millimeters compared to where I originally stitched it just to get nice and close and if for any reason you can see I don't know if we can see it here there's maybe a tiny bit um, of the original bias binding stitch line so hard to see one of the benefits of black you can unpick those because the bias binding isn't going to unravel or you know come to any harm um, because your lovely shirt is holding it in place so you could unpick those if they really bothered you I hope these tips have helped you make your Carolyn pyjamas. Um, if you've recently finished them, why not tag me in your posts so I can see what you've made.